Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I am John P. On today's Geek Beat Live, net neutrality, it's out the window. Google's getting into home automation. Burritos from a vending machine. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen when pigs glow. It all begins now. You're watching CES Live. Powered by Ustream.tv, uh, no, the most no, powerful is, way well, to stream live right. video. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And by Mutech, makers of the TriCaster. Uh. <laughs> In the uh, in the chat room says hashtag fired. <laughs> right. This is not CES Sorry. live. I, yeah. I'm still in CES, but I'm I, still recovering. I, I got I got it. It's understandable. No more CES. But I you can't gotta take it. You gotta admit that intro rocked and the voice was perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. For those of you who don't know, that was Dave Curley's That's voice. Right. That it was, does not sound like it. That, that was, was Dave's me. announcer voice. So um, we are back from CES. It was an amazing time. It was a blast. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed all the coverage. Um, we had quite a lot of it, a lot. You know, Ben is pointing out in the chat room that we had at least 20 hours of live CES coverage, Ooh. which is a lot. <laughs> the question is how many people actually watched all that coverage? The funny thing is that <laughs> I drove for 40 hours Man! Literally, I had 40 hours in the truck with Mark Ramsey for us to do 20 hours, 20 hours of, live recovery. of live coverage. Oh, we, we need to find somebody who can drive for you as opposed to having you to do that. Well, you drive me insane all the time. That's true. So, I don't know. Does that count? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm, um, as DP is uh, saying in the chat room, my voice didn't make it. Um, you're I'm, mostly recovered. I'd I'm say mostly, you're about 80%. I'm still kind of like dealing with a little bit of crap, but mostly recovered. And um, If you guys didn't see it, you can go check out all the uh, archived CES Live coverage if you go to geekme.tv forward slash CES, CES Live. Live. <laughs> well, um, and you can hear her voice going out on her in the last few days. She yeah. sounds like a 12-year-old boy or like a 13-year-old boy <laughs> going, through, going puberty. through puberty. It was pretty bad. Her voice is cracking and stuff like and that. And then we, of course, had to go to um, the auto show in Detroit where we saw some fun, awesome stuff. The and we Detroit shared that with auto you guys. Show. Uh, just a quick update, though, on the CES giveaways. Uh, lots of you asking. We had like 120 giveaways. No, I thought it was over 130. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a thousand. Some, somewhere in that range. No, a lot. 10, 130 000. giveaways for you guys. And uh, thank you so much for participating mm -hmm. in that. Just an update for all of you winners. If I haven't contacted you specifically, don't worry about it. I got your information. But I'm just waiting on confirmations from the companies that are sending them out in order to let you know that it's gone out. So. Yeah, it just takes just a while can't, to get back. I, I mean, can't, like, I, say, I got the information and then go back and, like, it's, a, it's just a lot of work so yes indeed <laughs> all right what else do we have patreon has we, been going nuts has you guys are amazing you guys are truly truly amazing while we were at you, ces yeah. so many so many pledges thank that's you that's right yeah we really appreciate it if you haven't yet had a chance to chip in with a little bit of support head on over to geekbeat.tv forward slash patron and you can join as a patron of geekbeat of the arts. Just even a dollar a month helps us keep bringing you all this great content, whether it's live at CES, <laughs> live here, uh, you know, with our normal show, or yeah. or just our regular pro programming and broadcast. We're we're needing your help because we want to give you even more. We want to bring on more staffers, get more content, do great <laughs> things. So thank you so much for those of you who are supporting us, and yes. we love you. <laughs> Indeed. Um, speaking of patrons, uh, one of our major patrons is Verve. That's right. So if you guys didn't see John's post about it, it's actually really, really cool. It's a, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's an energy delicious. drink. I need some right now, but I don't I have any. All I have is Dr. Pepper. Cough at button the curly. Yeah. <laughs> you talk so, about Verve. Here's the thing, <laughs> okay? This is an energy drink, but. First of all, for those of you like me who aren't so much into healthy stuff, when you, uh, when you, 
look at the can, it's listing all these vitamins and things in yes. it. So it makes you worried. You're like, that cannot be good. And then, Thank oh, you, there you go. Thank you. And then when you start chugging it, you're like, wow, this is delicious. That's not supposed to happen. Right. It can't be both good for me and delicious. It should be one or the other. But it's not. It's both. And you can get some if you go to vervegeek.com. Awesome. Vervegeek. Yeah. That dot com. Like Geek Beat. Like Geek Beat. Cool. It's, it's my new vice. Yes, like, it's all of our new vices. Anyway, I drank all of it that I had, mm. so I'm waiting on some more. I just want I to say I did not actually get much Verve while at CES. People were stealing them. They were. It was bad. It's the Mobile Nations clowns. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's right. Like Renee. Anyway, Ken is going to chop our heads off in a second because we have to stop for a quick commercial break, and then we'll be <laughs> right back and hop right into today's news. Woo! Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie. I'm John P. <coughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Callie is going to struggle through today's show. Sorry. And every time she starts coughing, I'm just going to ramble <laughs> mindlessly, which is what I usually do anyway, and just to cover that up. How's All that right. sound? That sounds like a plan. Go team. Yay. Cough. All right, so and we have a ton to cover because we've been gone so long, and a lot actually happened the week after CES, which is incredible because that never happens. Yeah. Usually it dies after CES, but... Not this year. Google started out by making headlines by buying Nest. For $3.2 billion. So if you're not familiar, Nest is the smart thermostat company. Um, they also now have a smart... Um, what are those things called? The carbon monoxide slash fire detector kind yes, of thing or something? That thing. 3.2 billion friggin' dollars? <laughs> well, it, it's, who it's, was smoking what at Google? There is no very way Nest can be worth $3 billion. Well, it depends on what Google wants to do <clears throat> with it. No way. Um, I haven't seen any numbers in terms of how many customers Nest has or anything like that, but... Um, Not $3.2 billion worth. <laughs> no. Uh, but, you know, it's, it'll be that they take up companies, they buy companies, and then they... Um, oh, yeah. They shut them down, of course. Yeah. Wow, well, And then they said, take that technology and do something with that it. That means I'm never buying one of those now. <laughs> uh, because Google owns it. Wow. So, so basically, Nest is going back into beta. I don't know what yes. is going on with that. But anyway, Google bought Nest, so that's big, big news. You know who else is buying people? <laughs> Both T-Mobile and AT&T, they want to buy you. They do. They want to pay you to come over from their competitors. So if, you, uh, if you're a T-Mobile customer, AT&T will pay you $450 just to come on over. To quit them. <laughs> Basically, it's $200 for a credit, like uh, probably for your exit fee <clears throat> penalty that you have to pay over there if there is one. Right. And then it's $250 credit for a new towards a new phone like a because yeah. these things aren't always interchangeable, Compatible. okay? But T-Mobile says, you know what AT&T? Ha! Huh. We'll pay you $650 instead to come over to us. And that's 200 more, isn't it? Is it? And I, th I was calculated at 125. Not only that, <laughs> they will pay you whether you're coming from Sprint, <laughs> Verizon, or AT and T. Right. They don't care. It is pretty impressive the way the uh, the phone companies are just kind of uh, going you, at it these days. I'll tell you what's impressive. <laughs> okay, for the last decade, we have been living under these carriers just forcing us to sign multi-year contracts yeah. and sticking it to us, okay? And all of a sudden, T-Mobile came out and goes, you know what, screw all that contract stuff. We're not doing that anymore. And by the way, we're not subsidizing the, the phones either. You can basically take out a loan and pay it off over time, but you're going to own your phone, no contracts, bring it. We're going to give you the love. And they came now, in, they made that announcement and just revamped the entire every, industry. It changed everything. I'm so happy. <laughs> I love T-Mobile, and I'd actually switch over to T-Mobile if they had a decent network. Oh! Uh, 
Uh, just kidding, all you Ouch. T-Mobile people. I'm just kidding. But seriously. That's not necessarily true. It is all a- It's not true. We're using Verizon Wireless, though. T-Mobile has a great network. So does Sprint. So does AT&T. They're all big, great networks. But we have found in our travels that we have more consistency with the use of Verizon Wireless, and we travel Just a lot. Just throughout, okay? yeah. It's the, it, but it always depends on where you are in your coverage map and, and so how much you're traveling. So. We are using <laughs> Verizon Wireless, although we pay more for it. Right. But for us, it's a business expense, and it's one of those situations where it's like, okay, we believe that we get more consistent coverage out of town, and it costs us more but we need it so we're willing to pay more. That right. is not necessarily the way a normal individual Correct. or family would or act. Business, so. It'd be better to save the money. Right. Now, Sprint also did something very interesting. What'd they do? <clears throat> they came up with a family plan. Oh, this is the dumbest name ever. <laughs> this is pretty bad. I always thought, it, I just kept looking at it like, who, who made this typo? Yeah, at first I was like, <laughs> ben, your, ben, your spelling is atrocious, <laughs> but I mean, you didn't just spell it family once, just you did like, like five times. times. I mean, you need to get your spell checker fixed. <laughs> so nope. It's, it's family and friends Friends plan. and family. It's so the family plan. It's the family plan. So basically, you can combine, very interesting, um, you can get unlimited calling and tax plus a gig of data for $55 a month. Um, you can upgrade yearly, like unlimited daily data for $20 a month extra. But here's where it gets very interesting is... The more lines you add to your plan, the less money you pay. So per line, you mean? Per well, total really. So two lines uh, cost fifty dollars a month. Three lines will cost forty-five dollars a month. What? And if you go, if you have like between seven and ten, you can go up to ten lines. Then it's going to be like twenty-five dollars a month. T wait, twenty five dollars a month for ten phones? That's my understanding. If I have no. it wrong, you've got to tell me. But um, <laughs> that's that's what I'm reading. And we then might be changing also, to I know, right? Yeah. And then also, you can actually individually um, pay for these. Like you can have them paid separately, all the different lines. So in essence, you, you can team up with your friends. You can team up with your friends. Like we could all be on the same plan essentially here at the less. office, and you get to save money. That's so, crazy talk. That is. Yeah, hmm. So we're doing Monday. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Switch <Switching> to <his> brand. <laughs> all right. Let me tell you the worst thing that has happened all year, possibly all decade at this point. This is the absolute worst thing that's happened this decade. Net neutrality was struck down by a court in Washington, D.C. It's the... Uh, <laughs> the D.C. District <laughs> Circuit Court of Appeals. And what happened was there was basically a law that said um, carriers had to maintain net neutrality, meaning that, let's say, if GeekBeat is broadcasting our show through the interwebs, you cannot deprioritize our traffic for... NBC who's broadcasting through the interwebs and NBC pays more money. Right. In other words, it allows Callie and I to be on an equal footing with Anyone Ellen else. or Oprah or whatever, okay? We're all equal. It's net neutrality. Well, the District Court of Appeals said, eh, you can't do that. That law is not valid and they struck it down. Right. So now the FCC needs to come out with some other way of regulating these carriers and well because it's very possible that the carriers go crazy with all sorts of yeah uh, you know favoritism you know the um, big the big thing it's not in our notes here but the big thing is uh, uh well it may be but i didn't read it but, but the big the big thing is that the fcc was not treating internet backbone carriers the same way that they were treating telcos okay so phone co phones have to all be treated right the same and they were saying, well, because you're classifying them as a different class, you can't do the same thing. So what I'm hoping happens is that the FCC goes back and revamps things in right. a way that will maintain the legal structure and treat all telco and internet carriers all the same mm -hmm. regardless. It's all data nowadays. Whatever it is should be treated neutrally. And this, my friends, is, and I cannot stress this enough and I'm serious I'm not actually I'm not joking about this 
This is the single biggest threat to the internet that has ever existed. And, 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 you know, everybody was paying a lot of attention to it when it was going on back, you know, a couple of years ago. But now that everybody's stopped really paying attention to it, we it's, it's potentially it. even bigger threat because everybody's not up in arms. Yeah. This, so John, say we, John, yeah. John could, this, could this open the door for <clears throat> antitrust lawsuits? Because this is going to basically incentivize them, the carriers, to act monopolistically, being that they oh. are content providers and backbones. Yes, it could. It could. It's hard to say what all the ramifications could be, although the carriers right now are saying, we're not going to make any changes. We just didn't like that law hovering over us, right. which is true. But if I guarantee you, and remember, I used to be an executive at one of those companies. I guarantee you that if this law, if nothing changes, give it a year or two, those guys at the top will start figuring out how they can capitalize on this and all hell will break loose. It will be terrible. Anywho, so we've burritos. got to take a quick, quick break. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk about burritos coming up in the next segment. My question to you, and we want you to leave a fame spot, quick video at geekbeat.tv slash fame spot is, would you eat a burrito out of a vending machine of all things? That's a good question. Would you? I might. Hey folks, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. We have solved the Cali coughing Let's problem. <laughs> Len With actually- With a big old bag of hauls, Len thanks Wilkerson to Lynn. went out and got, I was wondering where he disappeared to. I thought he was like, oh, I'm sick of this show, I'm out of here. Yeah, he went and he actually <laughs> drove to the store and got her hauls right That's here while we're, while we're li live on the show. I have to say we have the best people. We do. As all, part of the Geek Beat family. Awesome. Also, there have been a lot of questions because some of you have noticed that I am wearing a watch today, which I don't often do. Well, but you're a watch guy. You I, have, I do love, you love watches. watches. You have a lot of watches. I do have a lot of You've watches. You've spent a lot of money on watches over the years. Yeah, so Holly tells me. So Holly <laughs> reminds me. Even constantly. I hear about how much money you've spent on watches. Yes, that is true. Uh, <laughs> I was given a new Martian watch mm -hmm. during CES Live, which I was playing with and uh, enjoying, and now I am, am uh, actually wearing the Pebble watch, <laughs> right. which Mark Ramsey uh, talked me into trying out, and it's pretty cool. And just so you guys know, um, it's tied in with my email and texting and all. So if you were to send me a tweet to at John Pose, it will pop up on my watch nice. and I can read it on my watch. If you tweet at John Pose. Put it on the watch, let's see if someone does it. Well, it takes a second and there's a little bit of a delay. So uh, you send them to me and if you, if you tweet them at me, then I'll read them off uh, you know, in our, before yeah. our next break or something like that. <laughs> All right, shall we get to the uh, geeky, gadgety news of, this, of the week? Let's do it. What Google do we got? Google is making headlines again. Um, by oh, yes. their smart contacts. So um, <clears throat> the idea, so diabetes is, is a big issue for a lot of people in the world, specifically in America. Um, I, where was the, oh man, I don't have the stats in here. Something like, like 14 out of 20 people or something. Um, a lot of people have diabetes. Not 14 and, out of 20. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot of people. I know. That's why I was like thinking. That would be like 60% of the people. I know. No. But a lot of people oh, are faced with diabetes. And the problem is they have to be constantly checking their blood sugar levels. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, that could mean pricking your finger constantly till you lose all feeling in your finger. And so, you know, some of the guys over at Google said, hey, you know what? This sounds like a project we want to take on because we, we, we like to tackle the weird and difficult stuff. So look at this thing. They've, they've got this little, I don't know, prototype. They just announced this literally today. Uh, they're trying to embed a little sensor in a contact that you put in your eyeball, <laughs> all up in your eye socket. And I wear contacts, it's not that different. It measures the, the tears. Yeah, the glucose level or whatever through your tears in your right. eyeball. Supposedly pretty accurate. Well, that that is the most accurate way, but outside of contacts, how are you going to measure your tears? Like cry into a little vial, you know. Yeah, cry into a little vial, and then I go test it. It's yeah. not going to it's not going to happen. Um, so they are expecting to be able to uh, continue the process of research on these and get them out. Obviously no date or anything like that yet, but hopefully they make some headway. I mean, Google is known for 
pushing these types of proje projects forward. Well, hey, if they can spend $3.2 billion <laughs> to buy Nest, they can drop a, you know, oh. 100 million on development of this product and then, hey, they'll be in Google, Google eyeballs Although, all over the place. I did notice they said something about the way it would alert you if your levels are in or are, are not would good. Would it vibrate your eyeball? No, it would like light up, which doesn't do the user any good. Why not? Unless you can see that. No, I'm sure you'd see it. It would be oh, a little okay. glowing Like color. a little glow. That would be a little weird. And, and, I'd almost. And you're going to die. I'd almost yeah. rather it just like text me or something. I'd That'd like be awesome. to vibrate contact, my eyeball. They can text you. Anyway. A vibrating eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. My, uh, I need to uh, check my blood sugar level, and that'd be awesome. How about, um, uh, since we're talking about Google, how about getting Android in your car as a native uh, OS that's in your dash, and you don't have to deal with multiple systems? How awesome would that be? That would be cool. They're catching up with Apple back in 2013 at the <laughs> WWDC, the Worldwide Developer Conference. They announced... Uh, iOS was coming to the car, so uh, hey, why not get your Google in your car? That would be get awesome. Your Google on. Google's going to be in your eyeball, in your car. They're going to be everywhere. Google Cloud, I think they already are. They pretty so, much are. That, that's the open automotive alliance. Wow, we, we have got oh my gosh, Google filled with Google today. Google, <laughs> uh, speaking of Google and Google Plus... Maybe we should um, do a Google show. Maybe. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, we're going to change this to Google Live. How do you feel about the fact that 2 million people can now email you anytime they want through your Google Plus? Honestly, I don't know why everybody's up in arms about this. I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. Okay. It hasn't been a problem, and I would rather people email me as opposed to... Um, like message me on Google Plus because I never see those messages anyway. Yeah, but you say that now because you're not getting as many emails as you are getting messages. That's true. Reason, I do tend to get quite behind on email, so maybe it won't turn out to be good. <laughs> so for Callie and I, <clears throat> notifications on Google Plus are completely useless because there's so many. There's it's literally impossible to keep up. Unless you specifically tag our names, we don't see the that yeah, notification. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. But what happens, uh, what's happening is Google is now allowing you to send an email to anyone through Google Plus. But there is a setting that you can turn that off in your Google Plus settings. They sent yes. me, and I'm sure they sent you an email. No, they, they didn't send they, you. That? They don't send me anything until they send it to you first. Well, I and got then an days email. Pass by I got an email that said, "Very loved." Hey, we're about to start doing this thing where anybody <laughs> can email you, but because you have a whole large number of followers. We have not turned that on automatically right. for you. So I guess for most now, people... Now, wait a sec. Wait a sec. They're telling you because you have a large number of followers. Meanwhile, she has 2 million. Now, I'm sure they sent now, it to her, too. Yeah. Well, I don't I'm know. I'm sure they did. See? Well, I am a little more important than she is. Yeah. Apparently. When it comes to Google, all... you are more important. You <laughs> get everything Google first. I am so upset about this. But a couple more quick things about Google. Um, yeah. They opened up Google Play Movies into the iOS App Store, so you can now download that. Um, and also, uh, we're going to just move on at this point. Got a couple other really cool things. Do we got to get to those burritos before we go back to commercial That's break. That's true. Uh, Roku. Uh, everybody knows the Roku boxes, the little set-top boxes. Some of you may be watching GeekBeat on one right now. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing that. Well, those are awesome, but um, actually Roku is now coming out with Roku TV that will be integrated directly into a lot of the major uh, TVs as a smart app. Now they've had some. They've had another way of of integrating Roku into the TVs before. You could buy their little Roku stick. Right. And plug it into an MHL port on TVs that had that. But now they're building Roku into the smart functionality of TVs from Hisense mm -hmm. and from TCL, I believe. Yeah. And I'm sure there will be more others, which is, I think, fantastic. Yes. Because that will allow Roku to keep doing their development work and adding new channels to Roku and the TV manufacturers who are notoriously bad <laughs> about updating their smart TVs. I'm looking at you, Sharp. <laughs> um, they won't have to do it anymore because Roku's right. going to take care of it for them. All right, and now to uh, come back to the burritos One question. One last very important update. There is now a burrito box, a couple of locations in California only at this point, um, that will allow you to order a burrito from a vending machine 
like kind of like a red box. It's like red box. And free birds together. My favorite. We had free birds for lunch today. Yes, we did. This so, machine will make you a burrito. In 90 seconds, actually. And it uh, take, it costs $3. So even cheaper crazy. than most burrito places out there. Crazy, crazy. The question is how it tastes. I It'll no probably idea. taste like crap. You'd probably be better off just going down to the local 7-Eleven where you can also get a burrito or a hot dog or whatever. That's and been sitting on the warmer for better. hours. They're probably better. Maybe. We'll see. Um, so, speaking of burritos and uh, vending machines, actually, you had a better question I, for I'm, our fame spot. I'm changing up the fame okay. spot question, Let's folks. Let's do it. question I have for you is... What is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten out of a vending machine? That's what I want to know. Mm. Head on over Bread. to... Bread. That was true. Bread in a can. Head on over to geekbeat.tv forward slash fame spot. Let us know and we'll put your answer right here on television. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. John, would you like to pay attention to the th camera as opposed to your phone? I'm trying to get my <coughs> tweets working. You We're guys doing a been, show here. You guys have been tweeting me like crazy, and I was promising you I'd be able to read them on my pebble, but nothing. I get, I'm getting nothing, <laughs> oh. but I don't know why it should be working. And at the creepy kitty got upset on Twitter that uh, <clears throat> he wasn't getting any FaceTime on the show, so I moved oh, him. I see why. Here's why. <laughs> My pebble wasn't connected for some reason. Uh -oh. This says connecting. Connecting? <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Connecting. Cancel. We need to <laughs> click All right, put, to put connect. Put the pebble away. Connecting. Uh-huh. Connecting. So, Ugh. while he tries to get his thing working, I want you guys to take a look at this That's video. That's what she said. <laughs> um, and this video produced by, um, I think, Modo. And oh. They had, this is actually just a viral video. It went crazy this week. 30 million views already. And, uh, well, you know what? I'm not really going to set it up or anything. Just watch. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like I said, 30 million views. I mean, they just went crazy. I can't imagine what my reaction would be in that moment either. Listen, there I are two things that are the best things ever in that video. Number one, vomit. the projectile vomiting from the little <laughs> baby. And number two, you didn't see it in that clip. But if you go to geekbeat.tv forward slash... Oh, great. Walk up again. Oh, <laughs> one... What is I don't it? Know. 121? What are we? 121. Yeah. Live 121, then you can watch that video. And so the projectile vomiting, and second is the little baby flipping off cabbies. Did you oh, notice that? No, I didn't notice that. Oh, you got to watch it again. The little thing off. turns and turns oh, its head and gosh. flips off a cabbie. It's fantastic. <laughs> do you know? Do you know the what's things. brilliant about that whole deal? The whole deal. The that, whole deal. That is an ad campaign for a movie. That's right. Oh, it is, is it really? It's That's for, what it is. It's an it's ad called. campaign. Oh. Yeah, for do. the uh, Satan spawn, or what is? What, I think it's Devil's Do. Devil's Do. Oh. Devil's Do. I was, I was watching this and wondering, th you know, if this well, is what happened with Rosemary's Baby. Yep. I don't know what that means. It's been baking in the oven. What's Rosemary's Baby? Never mind. Oh, okay. It's a pop culture reference. It's a movie that was. A oh, I don't care. Really, like I'll learn Exorcist. that later. Right now, we have to talk about glowing pigs. Well, you said that we wouldn't have burrito boxes until glowing until pigs glowed. Well, You're guess right. what? Pigs are now glowing. Tell us about it. <laughs> that is just freaky. So, um, they they're using a process called transgenetics, which is basically, you know, uh, making something in one body and transferring those genetics, those genes, into another being, uh, whatever that being that is. Okay. The idea being here that um, they could as opposed to building something, growing something in a lab, which costs millions of dollars, they could do it more cost efficiently in like a pig and then transfer that gene. Is if, that a glowing pig? Yes, into a human body, for example. So they um, could make us glow? So, yeah, it's not about the glowing. This is really a process that 
it is a reaction um, to the process that is causing him to. So glow. what are they glow? What are they growing in the pig? An alien, and it's well, making the no, pig. Well, no, they're just the, the they're side just... effect of growing an alien <laughs> in a pig is the, that it glows. Uh, they basically have it glowing so that you can see that it's actually working and being introduced into the body. Oh, okay. Um, but it Does is it wear off weird. or is it permanent? I, they didn't go into that. I don't know if it wears off or it's mm. permanent. It would be kind of weird to have us all walking around glowing. Could, I, I could hear the Not uh, sure I could hear that. like the the heart medication right. ads and stuff saying you know some some <laughs> side effects may be death and dismemberment yeah, and, yeah. Glowing. and glowing and and sleep deprivation due right. to bioluminescence. And t- yeah, tube maker said Sam's green ham was actually green. Right, green eggs and ham. Uh-huh. I got that one. Because nice. I was, a, you know, actually read Dr. Seuss. All anyway, right. so hacks. let's talk about hacks because this. I don't know, blowing pigs is kind of a hack. Hey, it is a <laughs> hack, but this is getting ridiculous. Okay, the Target breach we reported to you guys a few weeks ago. Now, Target is saying, okay, I know we came back and told you it was worse than we thought once, but it's even worse than we thought <laughs> when we told you it was worse than we thought. Now. Uh, 70 million people's emails, contact details, and everything have been compromised by uh, Target. Yes. By their inability to keep your data safe. They let a an off-the-shelf piece of malware called Black POS, and that's not piece of... That's point of sale, probably. <laughs> uh, it's just an off-the-shelf piece of malware. They let it corrupt their system and gave all of our contact details to the criminals. Thank you very much, and Target. did you know this? We actually found out who, well, not by name, but uh, who actually was, uh, who wrote the, the malware code. Uh-huh. A 17-year-old boy uh-huh. in Russia. So they're not really seeing his name, but he is known for this type of um, malware behavior. I'm, I'm just going to call it malware behavior. Nice. Um, <laughs> By the way, the and, pebble is working what? again, okay. so you can actually go ahead and tweet me now, and nice. I will I will get those tweets. They're coming through as we speak. Awesome. All right. Well, so thank you, 17-year-olds. Oh, boy. Uh, I think it's time to go to commercial real quick and then come back and talk about robots. And read the tweets. And we'll read the tweets. We'll see you in a sec. Welcome back, guys. He just won't stop playing with his watch. I'm John P. And I'm Callie Lewis. I like. I just wanted to say I'm John P. Just to force her to say I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Callie Lewis. You gonna say that a few more times? No, because we can get it on a nice blooper reel. Blooper reel. <laughs> All uh, right, I'm, oh I'm no. ready to talk about robots. Oh, I don't no. know about you. Here we go. Um, before we get into robots, though, I do want to know uh, what's up with uh, you stealing menus. Oh yeah, from I forgot. We didn't even trip. talk about it. Look at this. Look what we have right here. That is a menu from. This is actually the menu at the Big Texan. Steak Ranch. Nice. Oh, look, that's the Big the, Texan uh, is real quick a restaurant uh, in Amarillo, um, where you, right. if you buy if you eat a seventy two ounce steak in uh, an hour, I think, then you get it for free. That's right. It's the home of the Big Texan steak. So it's uh, if you if you eat the whole thing, uh, where is it? I don't see where is it on the menu here. To the left. Uh, to the left, right John, here. John, make it straight, please, so we don't get glared. Oh, well, I don't know. Is that better? Make it straight. Like this. Okay. Well, here you go. There's Rocky Mountain Oysters on what the menu. Those? Kelly, tell us what those are. Oh, oh, I'm not talking about the Rocky Mountain Oysters. They're bull balls. That's what they are. <laughs> and those words somewhere, are not coming out of my mouth. I don't see it. But anyway, on here somewhere. Are those it, donkey balls? Yeah, they're not. If you get the big Texan steak. Yeah. If That's you what don't, I just said. If you don't eat it. If you can't complete it, it's like 80 bucks. But only awesome. if you're up on the stage where they have two live cameras shining at you. If you try and do it from a normal table, $200. Wow. If you want to order one and have people split them. Wow. We did not get it. All right. Well, I'm glad you uh, stole <coughs> menus on your road trip. No, they oh, gave it to me. Robots. They gave it to me. <laughs> um, this is a very popular uh, YouTube video the from the DIY laser guy. He took a uh, hex pod, 
and right, uh, attached thing. lasers to it. Oh yeah, this is scary. And uh, the lasers are powerful enough that they can pop balloons and they can uh, light things on fire. As you know, those are two things that uh, only happen with some of the most powerful lasers out there. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he's gotten quite a lot of views on this and um, I'm looking forward to getting one, uh, my hands on one. I'm sure you are. Because there are lots of things around here I would like to light on fire. Uh, don't be looking at me like that, little robot queen. <laughs> you know what you're going to do with it. Speaking of uh, more robots, we, you know how much I love the double, right? The yep. little double telepresence, the telepresence robot. robot. Well, they came in and just took the market by storm. They created this inexpensive telepresence robot that uh, is unlike anything else on the market. It's awesome. Well... Now we're seeing uh, another entry into the market, Beam Plus. Um, it's a twenty-five hundred. I'm sorry, it is a two thousand um, dollar telepresence robot that's in similar fashion. It's not like a Segway on two wheels. It ha it has does have three wheels, so they've been able to lower the cost a little bit um, by five hundred dollars. The first thousand units that go out are only going to be a thousand dollars, though. That sounds amazing. <laughs> This is a 10 inch display, um, 640 by 480, a four mic array, um, and battery life unfortunately is only two hours though. So this that is the, problem. is the big problem that I see with this potential one. And I was really looking forward to getting it, but two hours is not I don't even enough. Want it. The double actually lasts all day. The double lasts all friggin' day, plus 640 by 480 resolution. Right. What the hell? Are you getting these cameras at garage sales? 640 by 480? I mean, the, the, the double uses an iPad, which means that it has the capability video-wise of whatever the iPad cameras right. are. Even the back camera is way better than that, okay? So who wants a telepresence robot that runs out of battery after two hours? Yeah. That's ridiculous. It's Literally, you could not have a meal with your family remotely because the right. meal could last for two hours. And then what? The battery is just dead? Come on. There, so, th we have got to have some r information wrong. Even though I went to their website, I checked it out, and I even tweeted them saying, what's up with this two-hour thing? Of course, I only did that right before we came right. on, so I haven't seen a response maybe, yet. Maybe but seriously... Back. Two hours is not enough, folks. It's Double not. is still the king of <laughs> telepresence robots as far as I'm concerned. But it is nice to see more entries into the market, at least. That it is. All right. Uh, now would you like to talk about any automobiles? And of course we and would. Trains? It's auto time. Okay, <laughs> first of all, this first one, even you are going to freak out. Will I? I promise. In a good way? Yes. Okay, show it to me. Do you remember when we went to Hawaii and no. you got on a four-wheel drive thing? And you drove like a complete maniac. I loved it. Okay, she loved her ATV. Now imagine taking an ATV and and basically turning a truck into a full ATV. What? That's what you can do with the truck and go. Nice. Yeah. OMG. Look at this. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> that okay. looks awesome. Now here's what's impressive. There have been little tanky tread kind of wheel things for, for vehicles before. But what was involved in putting them on was you had to uh, take the wheels off and like bolt these things on. It was really ridiculous. These, not like that. Right. These are little tracks. You just lay them out on the ground, drive over them, kind of finish the attachment, and bang, you're acting like this crazy psychopath driving everywhere on the, uh, the uh, off-road. Huh. Is that not awesome or it, what? It is awesome. Now, you want to know the bad news? No. $25,000 oh. for a truck. So, yeah. yeah. They're about... You really need to leave them in Alaska. Yeah, they're about $6,000 per wheel. But hey, that's a small <laughs> price to pay to be able to drive your truck off-road like that. That's awesome. Okay, moving on. Speaking of a sm small price to pay, it really doesn't matter what they're going to charge for this because you're going to want one. It's the new 600 horsepower Corvette Z06. Woo. What they Look did was thing. it's based on the C7 Stingray, which is the most gorgeous vet they have maybe ever released. Right. Ever. But what they did was they took the 6.2 liter 460 horsepower with 460 pound-foot torque V8 
and they slapped an Eaton supercharger on that bad boy. So now we get it up to 625 horsepower, 635 wow. pound foot of torque. You can get it with either a seven speed manual or an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters. That's the one I would opt for. <laughs> you love your paddle shifters. I love me some paddle shifting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what can I say? You drive that big yellow flaming fiery bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm talking about Stingray. Oh my gosh. All really? over the place. Really, John? And All that's right. it. Well, that uh, looks cool. I want both I'm of them. Spent. And it's time to put down our iPads and tablets of all kinds and get on to the unboxings right after we come back from. Before we do, we need to know. What is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten out of a vending machine? Well, I've gotten underwear out of a vending no, machine. No, don't want to hear that. Go over to <laughs> geekme.tv forward slash fame spot and let us know what it is. Underwear out of a vending Japan. machine? Japan! Oh. Had a taste. Enough with the watch. Ugh, love this little watch. <laughs> he I loves think, his pebble. I think everybody should be able to check their email, get their texts, How about make a phone call? <clears throat> well. Yeah, I've got them over here on there. I can't do that with the pebble, but I can do oh. it with the Martian watch. <laughs> I can talk like Dick Tracy. She hates it. She thinks I look ridiculous. I'm like, hello? Yes, I'll be there in five minutes. Uh, maybe I'm just too practical, but you do look a little ridiculous. Phone, you sound like Nixon. Yeah, that's what you're. Ah, I am not a crook. <laughs> I am not a crook. We Let's have open some stuff. Boxes. Yeah, let's see what this we is, got. This is not a box that was mailed to us. This is a box that was picked up. Picked up by Pablo. By Pablo. I think he stole it. I'm not sure. He was shoplifting all that I think he was shoplifting, he was shoplifting and he came us. back with ba big buckets of stuff. He's like, yeah, I swear that he just gave it to me. <laughs> and we're right. like, okay. Sure. <laughs> they just gave it to me when they weren't looking. Well, though. open it up. Anyway, what is this? This is a mantra. It what says is a mantra? it's from Ohm Audio. Bluetooth, I, something I or other. Know. Is it headphones I or don't speaker? Know. What? Open Here, it. open it. <laughs> You're too busy oh. watching your SMS. Unbox and robots. Danny wants us to unbox some robots. Oh, I don't know so, that we have any robots. Yeah, okay, what do we got here? Let's see. Oh, it's, it's nice looking so far. Well, that's, okay. I like the little, little carrying case. I like the little carrying case. Right. That's nice. Why are you smelling it? <laughs> I, You're I not like Jared it. Poland. We don't do the smell <laughs> test. It's, it has a new smell, a new... It does smell like um, rather... <laughs> Fragrant. <laughs> right, let's, let's see. Open it up. Oh, it opens from both sides. Oh, look at that. Apparently. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh. Cool. So it's a little speaker. It, Wait. It's a Bluetooth speaker. It looks like it, it's it has a very wood. Different. It has a wood yeah. grain finish. A black wood grain finish. Yeah. And then it has a rubber foot on the bottom, so that will keep it, I guess, kind of from sliding around. It looks or well made. When you crank it up, you know. I like the little uh, the little exposed speaker here on the yeah, front. Yeah, that is it nice. It looks like it has, I guess these are these touch. These look soft, but they're not. They, that, they have this like, yeah, it, very specific It must look. be a touch yeah, thing, because that's play, yeah. pause, and phone call. Oh, so I guess this is yeah, a speaker phone. phone. And then on the back, what do we have? We have a port for the bass, baby. It's Bluetooth. <laughs> it has a USB uh, a micro plug. And it has an auxiliary in, so you could use it to uh, awesome. connect to some kind of a. Well, Paul actually device. put the uh, the link in the chat room, so you guys could check that oh, out. Oh, nice! How much are they? Yeah. How, how much? much is it, Paul? Somebody tell me how I much like it is. I like the logo. The logo is kind of cool bucks. looking. Ninety nine bucks. Okay, ninety nine bucks. And you can daisy chain. They're good oh, looking. Oh, you can daisy what? chain. You can daisy chain them. Bluetooth. Nice. Bluetooth. Oh, so you can oh. pair up two of them and get stereo. Nice. Nice. Okay, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> Here we go. This one came from FedEx. All right. What do we have here? What do we have here? <laughs> nice. Men of Steel. We've got a Superman something or other. Oh, look at those. Ooh, oh, nice these are Man of Steel earbuds. New headphones for me to try out. Anti-tangle flat cables with a built-in yeah. HD microphone. All right. So eight you millimeter can see drivers. they're blue. 
Um, and they have the little Superman. They have like the little Superman logo right here. Logo right so there. So they have to license Superman. They had to have. This these are from Gavio. G A V I O. And uh, you can see the the flat cable right here. It's like a a clear plastic on top of the blue cable. It looks really nice. It says Feels flat good. cabled cl crystal clear earphones with mic from huh. Gavio. Cool. Cool. We'll have to give them a shot. They my look nice. Mygavio.com. M Y G A V I O dot com. All right. All right. Let's keep it going. What else, Scott? I'm going to save this one oh, for last. Oh, I think I know what that is. Okay, let's Somebody's see. Somebody's going to be a happy man. What is this right here? Um, There's a black box. Black box. We've got with the uh, wrapping, orange wrapping paper. You got a little letter there. You want to do that teeth? while we... Ah, there's a, oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff wow, in here. Stuff. A lot of stuff. Here, move that off. All right. Oops. <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, tangle free USB cables. We, it looks like they have three different colors here. I can't. Uh, it's probably taped on or something. It probably requires a knife. A knife. That's my guess. All right. Uh, well, let's see. What do we got? Okay. You, you can see these are flat cables as well. <clears throat> Tangle free. Yeah, these what things are. What is this? Are a dual USB very universal secure. charger. Oh. There we go. You open it from the bottom, the bottom. and pull them out like oh. that. Ah. Oh. oh, they're nice and rubbery. Oh. They're like rubberized. Yeah, they're they rubbery. Nice. Say rubber so, one more time. <laughs> rubber. Rubbery. This is a two port USB charger and it flips open to plug into the wall. Nice. How many milliamps do we have here? Uh, output is 2.1 amps for each port. So that's two times 2.1. Oh, so it's not, yeah, this is not a battery. It's just for no, yeah. plugging into it's, the wall. But it's two times, it says 2.1 amps each port. So it's dual okay. full port. So you can charge two iPads or tablets or hungry phones like our notes <laughs> hungry simultaneously. Phones. Hungry, hungry phonos. <laughs> what is this? This is the Dashport dual output universal charger for any two tablets or devices at once. Rapid charge, it says. And then we also have a car charger in here. So, awesome. So is that. <clears throat> Nice, John. You like that? That was good. You know, this is actually a good looking little device. It's uh, yeah. it's thin, it's gray. It's rubberized again. <laughs> oh, and so one of the ports is on the bottom and one of the ports is on, on the side. side. Oh, and I yeah, like that, they have actually. the nice uh, gray uh, soft touch. And yeah, how about that? Cool, maybe somebody two, can... Wait, this is 2.4 amps oh, per port. Wow. That's a 4.8 amp charger. That's awesome. Very awesome. cool. Okay. Cool. That's Let's see what else we got here. Here's another one. One okay. for you. Okay. Wow. What else? What stuff? What'd you get? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, this is okay. So there are a lot of Bluetooth speakers on the market, as you guys have been talking about in the awesome. chat room. Uh, this is looks like a little coffee cup. Look at that. Yeah. That's a speaker. It's got and a little it has handle. like a little mug. That is cute. That is, and on the bottom here we've got. An on-off switch, a USB micro port, and an auxiliary uh, input. And then we've got our play, pause, volume up and down, skip left and right. So that's kind of cute. If it was sitting on your desk, it just look like a coffee cup. Yeah, that or is cute. Stick it down in the cup, so in the cup it's holder. A music cup, mymusiccup.com. Mymusiccup.com. Yeah. All right. What you got? Let's see. One. More speakers. Two, we have three. We have three in a box. <laughs> you want the pink one? Sure. Yep, he gets a pink one. <laughs> okay, let's see. What do we have here? This is uh, Democracy by MA Audio. Oh, the Democracy oh. speakers. Um, okay, we've got different colors. I'm going to need... Okay, here we go. Slide it out the side, right? Yep, slide it out the side, and then it opens right up. So, there we go. I like the packaging. I like their little I like they the designs a, on they them. They have a um, a card that says specifically, we want to hear from you right at the top before you get into the speaker. Nice. Ooh. All right. How did how did I get oh the pink one exactly? You grabbed it. I, I don't know. It, it, was it was the closest one to me. You're a girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know how I uh 
All right. What? Let's see. Are you going to break it? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm curious. <laughs> it says one can can only turn anti-clockwise. Don't turn more than 180 degrees. Oh, I knew it did something. Okay, there we so, go. Oh, oh. Ooh, look at that. You can adjust that, Dave. the speaker. You can oh. point it wherever you cool. want. Cool. Nice. So it points forward. So, and uh, on the bottom, the, you can route the cables to kind of hide oh, it. Oh, nice. Which is nice. Got the uh, charger right there. USB. Cool. They're lightweight too, but they're, they're, very they're rubberized. Light. I like rubberized gadgetry. Why do we like those things so much? I don't it just know. Feels it just feels good, good in your hand. Yeah, you will just want to touch it. Yeah, it says, oh, built in microphone. So these are actually speakers too. The rechargeable oh. battery, revolving access system, Bluetooth connectivity. So they do Bluetooth or they do the. Uh, the direct yeah, yeah input or do we have different one? Yeah, they all have Bluetooth. Awesome. So that's and very cool. No, I don't think his was smaller, Haram. Um, <clears throat> I think ours is the same size. The, these are all the same. Yeah. Just different colors. We have white, black, and that one was and pink, pink, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, move these over okay. because we have one last thing to unbox today. This came from my friend Nick who has a Kickstarter project going. And this is the day I leave the office in, for good, right? That I shared with you guys. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> and are you ready? These have never been seen before anywhere else. This is the world. Are you the world, only one who has it? I'm the only one. Nice. This is the world debut. Okay. Of his Kickstarter rubber, rubber band nice. project. You guys remember oh, that? Oh, it's already loaded, locked and loaded, ready nice. to go. You never ship all I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to. Um, <laughs> Wait, so are these two oh, different now ones? This, this no, is a 3D that, printed version. That is. <gasps> it's, cool. That is the only one in the world. No one's ever getting that. It's just a demo kind of thing. Ow. <laughs> And so no one's getting it. No, no, nobody's getting the plastic one. This is just a proof of concept kind of thing because it's all 3D printed. It's really lightweight too. Oh, it's not loaded. Oh, darn it. So we're going to get these things loaded up. <laughs> and uh, as soon as we get off the show and we'll shoot a little video to show you, we'll, we'll post it as a vlog. How's oh, that? Okay. We'll do a vlog about them. Uh, but you can order them and they're really cheap. They're like 30 bucks or something. You're going to awesome. get the whole kit. These things and are really cool. You can load them up with like 10 rubber bands. And notice when you squeeze the trigger, see how it keeps oh, yeah. incrementing that thing? It just increment, Cute. increment, increment. Oh. Nice. Yep, it's going to be awesome. Oh, All right, guys, awesome. we're going right. to do a little video and we'll show you later on. We'll be back next week if anybody around here is still alive. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Be sure to follow John on Twitter, Google Plus for more awesome finds like this uh, on a daily basis. So go to google.com slash plus John P or twitter.com slash John Pose, P-O-C. Or you could follow her. She's more important than me anyway. Google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis and twitter.com forward slash Callie Lewis. And thank you guys so much for chiming in on the chat rooms and sticking with us all each and every day. Yep. All right. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.